Hello, welcome to Open Dialogue. This is Noel T. Manning II. Really happy to have a, a couple of folks who are involved in Six Minutes to Midnight. Uh, Andy Goddard, who is the director and co-writer. Uh, Kellen Jones, also co-writer for this film. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I am always intrigued with films that are during this time period, uh, during uh, the, the World War II or pre-World War II or even post-World War II, but in that time period, I'm drawn to those films for a lot of different reasons. Um, my, my grandfather uh, was um, in uh, the United States Army, fought uh, during the D-Day invasion and, and several other uh, major campaigns. So always just drawn to films that cover this. And to capture something like this, the amount of research that you probably had to go through was pretty astounding. I'd, I'd love for one of you to, to talk about that research and what were some of the, the things you found that you did not expect as you were uh, diving in? Well, I think the, the sort of the, the basis of everything came from um, Eddie. Uh, Eddie grew up in Bexalon Sea, which is this small little seaside town in the southeast coast of England. And I think he, uh, he grew up there for like 11 years. He grew up there as a child. And um, he discovered uh, later in life that there was this school there in the 1930s uh, on the Southeast coast in Bexhill, um, where basically Nazi schoolgirls would come to England and learn English, uh, I guess, with the idea of infiltrating into higher British society and marrying English men. Um, and there are conspiracy theories about whether there was a sort of grander design from Hitler to do that. But the fact that this was actually there in Bexhill. So Eddie had already done a lot of research. So. A lot of it came ready-made, first to Kellen, who sort of was a double act with Eddie writing this, and then I came on board sort of later. And I think so the, I suppose the, the material about the, the true events of this story, about who these girls were, the Himmler's goddaughter was at the school, General von Ribbentrop's daughter was at the school. There was a governess called Miss Recall, who is, uh, which is Judy's character. Um, and there are press clippings and photos to back this up, some of which you'll see at the very end of your movie. Uh, don't leave a seat too soon. Um, and then beyond that, really, it was just maintaining the kind of the patina and the flavor of the late 30s. And that was thanks to a fantastic art department and my production designer, Candida Otten, and source of locations that would help, you know, flesh out that story. Yeah, and that, that actually touches on a question I had too, relating to any time you capture a period piece, you have to pay attention to, or you should pay attention to the things like the locations, uh, production design, uh, costumes, hair, uh, all of that. And it was just marvelous to see that come to life uh, on screen in this way. And uh, you've got spies, you've got secrets, you've got the girls, you've got a lot of questions. It's the summer before uh, the United Kingdom joins uh, the uh, the war uh, against Germany. So how did you scale that down? Because there were so many different choices you could have gone to. Um, I'll say a little bit and then I'll, I'll throw this over to Kellen. Um, I, I guess we, we, we love those kind of thriller stories from the interwar years and the pre-war years and the war years. And I love that period as well. I mean, it's time before, it's a in terms of the the story about German girls, it's a time before there's any kind of discernible teenage culture. It's a time before rock and roll. It's a time before counterculture. People behave in a different way. You know, any man of a given age in our film would have almost certainly have been conscripted into World War One. He would have had army training, PTSD, almost certainly also. And so th there is like a reverence to authority and a reverence to monarchy, which is a heavy hot topic at the moment. And I think so all, all of those sort of things come into play. But ultimately, I think um, it boils down to, yes, a thriller story. Yes, referencing Hitchcock and John Buchan and Graham Greene and all those great things. But also, it's about what is the currency at stake for our hero, Thomas Miller? And it's saving the hearts and minds of these young girls. And that's what it's all about. It's about saving the hearts and minds of young people and, you know, learning lessons from, from history. You know, let's not repeat history. I'll throw it to Cal. Yeah, well, I think with any any script writing, you start with the you know an, an idea, and then you ask questions. And we were always wanted it was a school, and the idea of learning about this world through the young people and the people that work in the school, and the sort of the privacy and secrecy around the school that kind of brought in these other questions that 
oh, who else would be interested in it at this time? And then maybe it would be the British government. And so this sort of, and you, the story actually builds itself really where you kind of go, and because we know what happens on the 3rd of September in 1939, right. we know the Second World War that comes with, it, with all that context and history, but this sort of pre, this pre-war time, this kind of where there's a, a level of paranoia, there's a level of tension in the air, there's a level of the unknown and a xenophobia in terms of the, the fear of the unknown there. And then also to put young girls and then think, let's treat them just like children. Let's treat them like young girls. If we do our job right, then the audience will care for these young girls, even though their their parents or godparents are high ranking, uh, you know, Nazis. We, we, if we can get them to be, we can care about Judy and care about the girls and care about what Thomas is trying to do, then that's all for the greater good and the greater story because it makes it a sort of human problem and a human aspect. So just by asking questions all the time, going through the writing process that we sort of develop into this sort of balancing act of the drama, the hearts and minds of the young girls and the school and also the uh, the thriller in the kind of the sign of the times, what's coming down the pipe uh, across Europe and the balloon almost going up and and uh, the, the tension that in the air that kind of helps towards that sort of genre of, of pre-wartime thriller. And uh, so, yeah, no, it was it was a fun balancing act to uh, a tightrope to walk, I think. It is amazing. You know, 70 plus years later, there are stories still to yeah. be told. Uh, and, I, and I'm glad yeah. that this one uh, yeah. was able uh, to be told. I, I do want to you know, talk about you know, the cast, wonderful casting. Mm. But I, I thought there was another character that played a role for me, and that was the locations that were chosen. Talk about the locations, because they were very significant to this film. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think because, you know, it's about the last summer of England, really, before the war, and the last sort of childhood summer um, and the, the, with these teenage girls. Um, yeah, we knew, well, we knew it was of excellency in the 1930s. So that's what we we're trying to find in Wales. Um, uh, the southeast coast of England is a very particular topography with chalk white cliffs. So uh, we need a little digital help to kind of help that along. But Wales has got some amazing locations. Uh, both Kel and I, you know, as Welshmen, we've kind of forged our careers in Wales, really. I've filmed there a lot. Um, and we had some wonderful locations along the coast of Wales. The school was incredible. It was this, this old kind of beautiful old building that was this kind of... Um, yeah, it became that precinct for the school. Uh, and, and, and I felt that building, both inside and out, was very much, as you say, like a character in the film. And we wanted the school to have that feel to be a character, this kind of mysterious house of secrets. You know, what is going on in this dream school? What happened to Mr. Wheatley, the first teacher? You know, uh, lots of questions which maybe don't immediately get answered. So, yeah, and it, and it was... Um, but it was, it, it was difficult, you know, trying to you know, the, the seafront pier and everything. There were very specific bespoke locations, but um, yeah, uh, go to Wales. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, Andy and Kellen, thank you so much for bringing this uh, story to life. Any final thoughts or comments on uh, Six Minutes to Midnight that you wanted to share? Well, I, I all love the, the idea that Andy and uh, his director of photography, Chris Seeger, had very early on, which was sort of, keeping the light out of the school, which I thought was kind of a really inspired bit of storytelling. Uh, so, you know, credit to Andy and, and Chris there, building that world of a hot summer and the light being kept out and just creeping through the windows yeah. and in the daytime and the haze. And you really are in that sort of last British summer before what will happen, what happens will happen. And I thought that was an inspired bit of visual storytelling from Andy and his team there sort of throughout the story. and. So all these bits are so sort of considered and really, you know, every moment is really, really considered. And at the same time, I think the, it's, it, you know, we want the audience to not notice all that scrutiny and and, and painstaking work and, and, and thinking. You just want them to have, first of all, a good time in the cinema for 90 odd minutes. And then let that message come through clearly, which is, you know, learn from history. Look, childhood is only made of a few summers and, um, you know, the, um, uh, and, uh, you know, history, we, we're doomed to repeat ourselves if we don't learn from it. So uh, 
yeah, no, thrilled, thrilled that uh, all the people in America can get to see this movie, Noel. It's kind of so awesome for us, you know, because um, you know we we've been waiting for a while because of COVID for the film to come out, and right. and uh, it's great for the whole team who made it, sort of getting out there. So the fact that people can see it in cinemas and see it wherever they rent and buy movies uh, through our, uh, um, is totally fantastic. And uh, to chat to yourself and uh, you know. Uh, supporting us is is great for a couple of Welsh boys who who tried to take on Hitchcock. It's not too shabby, is it, Andy? (laughs) (laughs) Kellen, Andy, thank you guys so much. Uh, Andy Goddard, director and co-writer and Kellen Jones, co-writer for Six Minutes to Midnight. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Meet Me at the Movies. Appreciate it. And we hope more people get a chance to check out this film. Indeed. Thank Thank you.